Okay, so that's the basics of local maxes, local mins, saddles, but what about the degenerate case? If you have a degenerate critical point, then you can't necessarily say anything uh, just based on the second derivative, of course. You need higher order terms. Consider the following example, x cubed minus 3xy squared. That function vanishes to second order at the origin. There, there is no second derivative to examine. But if we take a look at what happens, it's as if that critical point is really flattened out there. In this case, the cubic order terms determine it. And you could look at, say, a contour plot. This is sometimes called a monkey saddle. It's a little bit like a generalized saddle point, but it's kind of weird, right? And there are weirder things still that one can get. Now, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Can we classify all of those higher order things? And we've still not really given a classification theorem that's going to work in dimension higher than two. So this is a little unsatisfying. To do it for real requires learning eigenvalues, and I'm not going to teach you that. You can take a look at the epilogue for a few hints on how that works, and then take a serious linear algebra course. But in the context of what we're doing, please, be careful. We're only computing local maxes and mins. There's a big difference between that and global optimization. And we've said nothing about checking boundary points, which in higher dimensions leads to problems of constrained optimization. And we're going to need some more tools in order to solve that. But before we, before we go down that road where there's a lot of complications, we're going to pause and just take a look at some interesting real-world applications of non-trivial optimization problems in order to practice our skills and see some cool stuff.